Okay, eight o'clock. Good morning, everybody. For those of you who don't know, I'm Monty. I'm uh, we doing the morning meeting today, and uh, we'll start with some stretches. Head circles. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Stretches on the wrist. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Twist me. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great. Uh, stretches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Behind the head. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Turn. <clears throat> One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Twist. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Catches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All the way up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, side stretch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Touch your toes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, legs are legs full. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, stretched out. Uh, something that I am grateful and proud of. I guess I'm just grateful and proud to be able to get up on the right side of the dirt today. So uh, let's take life one day at a time and enjoy it. <laughs> shout outs. Got some shout outs. Oh, I got one. This shout outs from on Monty's behalf, flying straight in for a defensive end. <laughs> We're going to the Super Bowl, boys. <laughs> we left the dock yesterday, but Bryce wasn't here. Shout out to Bryce for that tag time video that he put together a few days ago. That was really good. It shows the importance of speeding things up. I thought that was great. Well, Monty and CJ, Kristen and Chad already. Big help in the Shout out to all the uh, book club leaders. I know those are kind of drawn to a close. Really appreciate that. Brian, thank you wherever you are. Thank you very much for leading ours. Really appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Anything else? All right. So I uh, got the improvement video of the day here. I thought this was pretty good. Quick and easy. Kind of what we're after.
So, so for those that are wondering what exactly the improvement was, it's the casters on the table. So now they can, instead of picking the parts up and carrying them from the thing on the cell, they just roll it. So, uh, before and after, powder coat, before and after, Travis, clean that up. That, that, was, that was good. You need all the same day before again. <laughs> uh, of course, our core values. My quote of today, today is another chance to get better. I thought that was pretty fitting for the whole lean process. Don't know who quoted that, but Chris Chad. All right. So uh, okay. the topic today, always be closing. So it's kind of a weird topic to try to tie in with lean, right? Because always be closing, that's pretty much a sales thing. And just a little bit of history on, on that. Um, I've been selling real estate for almost 25 years. So always be closing is very important in our, in our field because if we're not closing, we're not making money. So uh, I'm going to try to tie it into lean somehow. <laughs> so what is always be closing always be closing is a pop strategy and motivational phrase in the sales field encourages salespeople to view every interaction they have with a prospect as a chance to guide that prospect towards making a purchase it all reflects the idea that you could encounter opportunities to market a brand in unexpected situations Professionals who apply this tactic aim to promote a product or service as much as possible while uh, talking with potential customers, even when engaging in casual conversations. Those who implement this method successfully can attract clients organically without relying on aggressive sales maneuvers. So, I mean, basically, always closing is that you're always trying to sell that product, no matter what. Bring it up anytime you get a chance. So, how does that kind of tie in with lean? Well, you could think of it as, um, you know, one of us guys, we're not salesmen, right? We're on the floor working, but maybe we're at an off-road event. Somebody's talking about bumpers. It gives you a chance to bring, hey, man, I work at JCR Victory. You make these great products, and you could try to push that product down and give them a site to go to. So that might help out. And then it's up to, to the sales department then to convert that sale if, if it happens. So, you know, that might be one thing to think about. Uh, how could that tie in with lean? So examples of always being closing. Here's an example of always be closing uh, approach that may help outline the process for you. In this example, a salesperson takes the opportunity to promote a brand at a party. So here's here's the example. Uh, Jane, whatever her name is, is a salesperson for uh, cream, uh, Creamery, a small business that specializes in ceramic dinnerware. While at a party at a friend's house, she hears guests talking about wanting to invest in some high quality plates. She mentions to the guests that she works for uh, Creamery and can personally attest to the quality of its products. She can get the guest number and send her a link to the company's website. By integrating the brand naturally into the conversation, Jane generates lead and eventually closes the sale. So that's kind of just what we're just talking about, right? Uh, even social media is a good spot. Right? I think these guys do a great job on social media. They're in all those all those forums and always pushing our product. So right, they're always trying to close. And you know, you guys can do the same. <clears throat> you know, have to be in sales to try to promote our product and push it. So uh, conclusion. Uh, I actually have some notes here to help me get through this one. Yeah, sorry guys. It's a lot of notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did I, I actually I think I missed a slide. I thought I had some examples in there, but I don't. All right. Well, anyway, in conclusion, keep the conversation pleasant. So if you're gonna push the product, don't be don't be real pushy, you know, don't insist that you gotta go to this website, you gotta, you gotta check this out, you know, keep keep it pleasant, keep it light. Um, validate the prospect's perks, right? So somebody's going to say, oh, man, yeah, you're pushing Victory. I, I seen on, you know, the Toyota form, Victory sucks. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, validate that. Concern. Well, you know, hey, maybe that was a, a once a once thing. We don't really know what happened there. But, you know, whenever there's a concerns that's brought up, we're our customer service guys are top notch. They'll, they'll take care of you. 
they'll answer your questions. They'll walk you through. So um, prepare answers in advance. So again, if you're going to push these things, you know there's going to be some questions coming up. Just make sure you know what you're talking about. That's all. You all work here. You all have the knowledge. So just make sure you can answer those questions as they do come up. Um, remain communicative. Uh, so basically, that's more or less like you, you talk to the guy, and then you just don't let him go. You follow up with him. Hey, man, did you get a chance to go visit that website? What you think of the products? Find anything you like? You got any more questions? Say follow them home. Follow them. Yeah, follow them home. Follow them home, Jamie. Did you get on, the, did you get on that website yet? Gotcha. No. I can't pee in a toilet. Yeah. <laughs> um, cultivate long-term relationships. Again, that goes back to the follow-up, right? You, you know, you're going to you're gonna hopefully sell these people, and you're going to keep them, make them a repeat customer, so they'll come back and buy them. And then uh, know when to concede. And, and sometimes you're just not going to sell that. And you just got to know when when it's enough or enough in law. So. All right. Questions or comments? Well, cultivating long-term relationships. Monty's my second customer ever. So long-term customer who's become a valuable employee. So you never know what life spins on you, but... You know, there's an example. I would say a way to maybe relate this, relate this to what we're doing is, in theory, we're all customers of the lean process at JCR, right? So you could kind of take what you just said and apply it to everybody here, right? Everybody you interact with every day is a customer of the lean process. So always be closing with the people we're out with, right? So right. if we have folks that are um, having a hard time, maybe figuring something out or understanding something or getting a little further along that process, right? I think we can we can all do this to some extent and do it in a graceful way and just continue to push and grow the not push and pull, I guess, and grow the deep culture to get you up. Uh, when it comes to keeping the conversation pleasant, there's a fine line you don't want to cross where it just becomes annoying. Uh, you don't want to tell them something they want to hear that just might not be true on your end. I had a car salesman try to tell me he was my neighbor one time. It's just not true. He's not my neighbor. <laughs> 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 There you go, Bryce. That is, that is exactly true, right? And some salesmen, they, they take it to the extreme. That's that's kind of where they uh, don't go to the extreme. Exactly. I know that in my, I don't know, I go to a lot of meetings around the area and I usually wear swag and then I get all sorts of questions about, hey, what do you do there? And I like, yeah, we do all this sort of overlanding gear and armor for our trucks. And I've, I've talked to quite a few people in longevity about our products and stuff, and they seem really interested. I don't know if they came and ran here and bought it, but, you know, it was always a pleasant conversation, and I was always willing to talk to them about it. Or down there at the gas station, I'll see two some Jeeps with no, no gear on it. I'm like, hey, man, come on down. We got what you need. I'm like, Jeep up. Let's do it. So, that's a great thing. Same thing, I got a friend who has a, a Tundra and actually, I believe he came in and bought a bunch of shit. Uh, Tommy, I think Tommy, what's his last name? Harvison. Really hard writer. Who's your neighbor? Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that does work. Any other questions or comments? All right, so uh, department check in. Christopher. All the time, man. All right, it's cool. Uh, laser? Laser got good yesterday. Between yesterday and last night, we've got 22 sheets of material. Six sheets of seven day going on. Yeah, six sheets of steel. Regular ninety five total jobs. Uh, nice. Uh, yeah. uh, CNC. We didn't. We didn't do anything in CNC yesterday. We were up front helping Chris get all that stuff coming out of the laser moving on. So, break press. Me and Colin helped build in on the Dick Press and uh, Keith Gary company yesterday, and everything kept moving. I feel like I got some pretty good stuff done in the morning, and I found quite a few things. Uh, I took some notes in my phone, I don't know about Colin, but keep finding stuff that just needs 
left and right programs, needs better back ages. Um, I worked through it yesterday, but was able to gather some stuff that I'll be able to go up down and fix. So. Yeah, I think that's great. The engineers are down being able to run that first hand and experience what our guys go through every day. I think that's a huge asset for everybody. And in the end, it's just to make it all, all better. All this can fight on the go. <laughs> Which shot? <laughs> Your bumper. Well, they don't get mine, so that's why you're going to put it just to a little okay. price. There's why I fight. Also, I think I want to know Nate. Uh, Ryan has a really good that we make now because he's designed them all. So I think Ryan now has to bet every stage gets it. That's just my proposition. <laughs> what's going on there? This is uh, this is an example of going to the Gemba, as they say. So they're putting your work boots on and going and doing the work at this place where the work is being done. Um, I was trying to say in marketing chat yesterday, and I said it in the office chat, that their Gimba is different. This isn't necessarily their Gimba, right? So for marketing, their Gimba is the website where we're selling the products. That's their work for. So sometimes when you need to find an answer, you need to put the work boots on and go to where your source of work is being done. Great. Um, we're at FAB. We had a... Previous day yesterday, we got this blue one about the door. Um, there's a, a two man cell on the other side, so the register up for a minute. They got a bunch of smaller stuff out. Um, we started leaving all the, the fasteners and the jigs so that they're right there when you need them. You don't have to guess what fastener goes in, you just have it right there. Um, and today, me and Cole are going to try to get a two man cell on the other side, and they're starting rear strikes again on the Three man side, so south side, right? Yeah, it's not yes, north and south. All right, uh, counting and purchasing. Yeah, continuing to count on everything, um, less surprises these days, which is great. And then going be working into the like shipping supplies and stuff, um, the next round of compound parts. So if you continue to see things that we need repeatedly, make sure we're getting compound parts for engineering. Eric. <laughs> I think we're doing good. Uh, I think today is my day on the press, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, I think I'm going to be down spending two for Fab as well, and then two for Alan. So, full day on the go. All right, cool. Um, customer service department. Uh, yesterday was good. We finished up. Deciding fight for the product groups to all the products still going through and just in pricing. Marketing? Well, yesterday I got Corey's uh, price analysis for market items for bumpers and sliders mostly. We raised a lot of prices on the website on bumpers to kind of get closer to what the market is doing. We're still a great value, but we want to just make a little more money on those big products and take forever to get to the shop. The camera and I have looked through some of the uh, copy, the ad copy for the sale. Great. Uh, shipping. Uh, monthly goal. This is our current. Uh, yesterday shipping total, which was closer to what it actually was. We were a little off yesterday. Pretty late to see. And this is what we need each day to reach our goal. Also, we're working in the shipping department. We're rolling, Kevin and I are rolling combine carts over there on the rack where the molly panels are. We now have it mostly under combine. So there is some understanding that needs to be made with that, with those products. We're not putting the combine in between to separate the inventory. It's literally on the front. So you have to look at the card and be aware that, hey, when it gets down to two, I need to pull this card and turn it in. So just have some awareness and the combine is not going to be necessarily the same everywhere. You know, so what is in these bins is going to be slightly different on inventory. Um, we did see a lot of products that we have overproduced, and I've picked one out a couple of them. We also have a lot that we've underproduced, which is also good. So I've turned a lot of cards into price, probably 15, 20 cards, probably, of product that is out of stock that needs to be in stock. So that's pretty cool to see. And then also that should help with the evenness with flow because price will be continually getting jobs to make instead of trying to figure out what to win. Not to jump in there too, but I'm doing the roof rack mount, so you're going to start seeing those bins circulate. Yeah, oh, that's a good thing. Keep your eye out for that. On, on some of the product, the bins are the traveler, yeah. just like they are with the totes with your dunnage bins. So with roof racks, the bin is going to travel back to be made 
So that way, as each part of the process, we're separating them in lefts and rights so that we don't end up making too many rights and too many lefts. And then the other thing is, is that when shipping gets racks back from powder coat, they just have this big bin of rack mounts and they got to sort them all. So if we just build them in those bins the whole way through, even when they come off the powder coating rack and they get put back in the bin, the bins come right back on, right back on the shop. So it's cutting a lot of waste out in that motion and transportation. Great, okay, cool. Um, robot. No, I put the robot yesterday. We do have three bumpers sitting in front of us today, so we will be, you know, get all those simply through the robot for the booth as well. And powder coat. Um, first thought about all of 47 and 60 inch crossbars, so the production will go slow and actually extend it back over there, but they had focused on that, so we got that. All right. Uh, hey, and so, hey, tomorrow, do we have anybody for tomorrow? Thursday. Thursday. Joel. 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 Take it tomorrow. All right. Joel is presenting tomorrow on. Yeah. Probably some effective communication. I think we're going to. Keys to effective communication by Joel tomorrow. All right. Yes. Yeah.